Hello everybody, welcome back to the software architecture vlog series where we speak about all things software architecture. I'm your host Tengiz, I'm a software architect with experience in application, solution and enterprise architecture fields. I'm also a book author which is about engineering excellence, software architecture and leadership best practices. Today's topic is one of my favorites. It is about universal three-layer application architecture and the question of the day that I will try to answer will be how many layers? In this session I want to help you see a Lego effect. In other words, the popular three-layer application architecture repeats itself on both the high-level as well as the low-level components as you build your application. On the high level, you have tiers, and when you look at them together, perhaps you will notice that you have tiers for the UI, business logic, and the storage. And now try to zoom into one of the tiers, and you will notice that this tier consists of layers, and they also follow the same layering pattern. This is the Lego effect I was talking about. Now let's look at some examples to better understand how to take advantage of this knowledge. Let's start with an obvious or a classic example of the desktop UI application. In this case, we will have typical layers of the UI, business logic and data access layer, and perhaps it's easy to distinguish where they are at. The UI layer will be represented as the application screens that you build for the desktop in this case, so it's quite easy to notice this layer. Business logic will be some kind of a class library or a package which the screens reference to invoke some logic or the code execution. And the data access layer will be a package which has ORM or other mechanism to interact with an actual storage. And perhaps you will also count the database as part of the data access layer if you want to. Now let's look into a more advanced example. It is less common that people see the same layering schema in such examples, but if you start seeing it now, it will help you long run in your career while building applications. Suppose we have built a web UI application consisting of a SPA or SPA, web API and a database. SPA stands for single page app. So in this case, SPA or SPA will be a first tier with which the user interacts. On the interaction, SPA involves another tier, which is web API. And this tier perhaps will have a business logic in it. And the final tier will be a database, which is invoked from the API. So as you notice, high level, we have those classic most popular tiers, the UI, the business logic, and the data access layer. And we call them tiers because they run in different processes and there is an invocation between them. Now let's try to zoom into each of these tiers and see the same layering pattern which exists there as well. If we zoom into this part here, perhaps we will see that it is built using one of the most popular UI frameworks such as Angular, React or Vue.js. And as you drill into this tier, you will notice that it will consist of a view or a markup that represents this screen. And afterwards, this view interacts with a view model or a controller, depending on which UI framework you're using. And finally, you will have such thing as repositories or services with which those controllers or the view models interact. So again, we saw this three layer pattern here. View represents the UI layer, uh, view model or the controller represent a business logic layer perhaps, and finally the repositories and services represent the storage or data access layer. Now let's zoom back out and zoom into the web API tier. In this case we will notice perhaps controllers or the handlers 
which accepts and process the HTTP requests coming from the outside, in this case from the UI tier. And then these controllers or the handlers invoke a business logic, which is perhaps a separate package or a class library. And finally, that package of a business logic invokes a storage or the data access. So again, we saw these three layers here as well. Now let's zoom out and zoom back into the database tier. I know that very few people have thought about a database as a full-fledged tier consisting of layers by itself, but think about it from the standpoint when Microsoft or Oracle build their storages. They perhaps build their layers as well. And in this case, it helps to realize that there are three layers as well. First layer is the one that accepts the connections and handles the protocols using which you interact with the storage. The next layer is the one that is responsible to invoke the query or the stored proc. So there is actual code execution happening in the second layer. And the final layer would be a file storage. That is where the database angel typically stores the files which contain the actual records of the database. So again, we saw the same three layer pattern in the database tier. Let's zoom back out and we will see the high level three tiers again following the same three layer architecture pattern. Perhaps everything that I showed you already proved that there is a Lego effect of the three-layer architecture which happens on both the high-level as well as the low-level components for every application. But there are some caveats which I want you to think about now. Specifically, the data access layer is a special layer which sometimes changes its purpose depending on from which tier you are invoking this data access layer. For instance, if you are building a desktop UI application which runs in a single process, of course your data access layer is very classic implementation of its structure. So there is no special caveat in this case. But look at the data access layer when you are building a web UI application when the data access from the UI tier is an API. The reason I'm saying that there is a caveat in this scenario is because the web API does not always serve as a bare storage for the UI tier. Sometimes there is some logic within the web API that needs to execute on top of the data and have some other side effects besides just storing the received JSON or sending it back from the database. And for that reason, if API is applying some additional logic besides just storing and retrieving the data, perhaps we cannot really say that this is a data access layer for the UI. Sometimes it is a service and that is all right. Uh, in this case, we have replaced the data access layer with a service layer within the UI tier. But the purpose stays the same. The UI tier itself has some logic within and after that, instead of invoking a data access layer, it uses the service layer and the rest of it stays the same. So it is still this similar pattern, just with a little caveat. I have also seen some UI applications which just simply store the data using the API and retrieve it. In other words, the API is just a backend for the frontend and that is all that it does. At one point in my career, when I realized the difference between such API patterns, I even gave them different names. The first one, which is applying some logic on top of the data, which is most common, I call that business service. And the second one, which simply stores the data, which is less common, even with the SPA apps, I call that a data service. If you want to learn more about that difference, you can go and check out my blog article on my website. And how about other layering schemas, you will ask? Well, I know that there are many other layering schemas such as onion architecture or other patterns which don't necessarily mention UI business logic or the data access layer, but I think about them as just supersets or extensions on top of this three-layer 
architecture schema. So I'm not really concerned that you cannot apply the same schema regardless of its exact name on all the levels, both the high level as well as the low level components of your application. So I think this Lego effect will repeat itself either way. The only advice I would give you is whichever layer in schema you will pick, be it an onion architecture or a classic three layer application architecture, just use consistency and apply it consistently on both the high level as well as the low level tiers and layers accordingly. And that approach, applying the same consistent layer in schema everywhere, answers the question of the day. It doesn't really matter how many layers you will have, but you should follow the consistency. So if you picked three layer application architecture pattern, apply that on both the high level as well as the low level built-in blocks for your application and you will definitely succeed with it. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this topic. If you did, please click thumbs up button so that others can also learn more about the universal three layer application pattern or the Lego effect as I call it. Subscribe to my channel and you will receive notifications about future videos which I post around software architecture. If you have questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below and I will respond as time allows. Also check out other blog posts that I have on my website. I will put a link to it in the description of this video. And of course my book. This is a great book for software developers, software architects, uh, non-technical audiences, including top-level executives. You can learn a lot of things about the modern STLC practices which happen within large enterprises and taken from my experience entirely. This was Tengiz and you are watching Software Architecture Blog Series. Thank you and bye bye.